Am I recording? It looks like I'm recording. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing, so hello. I'm Laura Vernon Taylor. Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a day, maybe two days in the life of an inspiring author slash writer. I think you're an author when your work has been published in some way, shape or form. None of that has happened to me yet. Uh, but I am a writer. I write all the time, whether I want to or not. I write for school. I write for myself. That brings me to my next point, though. I just finished my last week of my first year of my undergrad which is in creative writing and publishing so that's really on par with what we're talking about and after finishing this previous semester this most recent one i have been in such a mood to read which has been quite the unusual thing to happen to me over the past couple months while i've only been reading and writing for school I was so ready for this semester to be over, not for any particular reason other than that. Of course, at the end of every semester, there is a crap ton of work to do, and I was just over it. <laughs> but now that that's all over, I get to work on my novel for the next two months until it has to go to the editor in not the beginning of June, because the date changed to the 21st, so I have a little bit of time to finish my novel, read over it, and then send it to my editor. So with all that being said, it's a bit of a tight deadline. I normally would like to have more time, but because of school and everything, I didn't really have the time to work on this book. So we'll see where things go. Um, I've already pushed back the date this one time, so I, I really don't want to cancel on my editor. I want to release this book out into the wild by the beginning to middle of next year. I'm thinking this time next year. I was originally thinking January, but with the way things are progressing at the moment, it'll probably have to be a little bit later. I did do a bit of an overhaul in terms of like rearranging chapters and adding a few new things in, or at the very least, I was giving a lot more context to a lot of the things that I had originally put into this manuscript. Because this is a high fantasy novel, I'm not quite sure what category it will go into, YA new adult somewhere where the line kind of is drawn between the two. That's kind of where my novel is sitting at the moment because there are references to sort of 18 plus themes but none of them actually like have been written yet explicitly. So I'm still trying to figure out what category it fits into based on that but it'll probably end up being a new adult theme although I know there is obviously a huge market for YA fantasy that's why I'm a little hesitant to put out a new adult fantasy not that those don't do well but it's just it's tough trying to figure out what I want to do because as a self-published author you have control over all of that and that's both amazing and terrifying at the same time because if you make the wrong decision it's all on you and you can't blame someone else in the marketing team for putting your book in the wrong category it's it's all on you you're the one to blame you are the marketing team so one thing that i also wanted to talk about before i move on to the actual like writing stuff is my current reads because to me, my current reads nowadays anyway really reflect what I'm writing in terms of genre and category. The reason why I am sort of wondering like like how explicit do I want to get with this book is because like, you know, in books like The Atlas Six, adult themes are mentioned, but as far as I am aware, I'm only 130 pages into this book thereabouts yeah 128 pages in there's no graphic scenes as far as like sex and stuff goes because it's just it's a very character driven story and there isn't a huge focus on romance at the moment i'm sure there will be at some point so i'm wondering do i want to go down that route or another book i'm reading right now called the fox love king by hannah witten again i'm not that far into it but i can already tell this is going to be a lot more romance heavy and i'm wondering if i want to go down that route because i don't want to, my characters might be asexual so i don't want to like force romance on my characters if it's not there and it's not organic uh, by the way, both books 
are great so far but for different reasons if you like character driven books the atlas six is probably your go-to and then this book is definitely at the moment plot driven though i can see how one how i get attached to certain characters so far i originally started the atlas six earlier this week and then i moved on to the foxglove king because i feel like with the atlas six it's hard because there are six povs and it's not that the book is badly written or anything like that i just i need to listen to the audiobook while i read because for me six like multiple povs and more than two usually it, it can be a little bit difficult for me to get through just because of that reason alone it's no fault of the author's like prose or anything the plot itself seems interesting enough and i've gotten through books like six of crows just fine um and that happens to be my favorite book of all time so like it really most of the time though multiple povs can be a little hit or miss for me and it's funny because i'm trying to write a book with multiple povs so it's interesting to see how other authors go about it um but right now i'm mostly focusing on the Foxglove King as far as my reading goes because I just I don't know I've been waiting to read this for a long time I've been waiting to read the Atlas Six for a while too but I don't know when I picked this book up the other week I just like I knew I had to read this as soon as I picked it up so I'll update you guys on the reading as well as the writing so this will be a bit of a reading vlog too. All right it is 203 and I have now moved to the basement because I was falling asleep while trying to write. And I could pull out my laptop right now and write some more, but I think I'm gonna wait a little bit to do that because I was falling asleep and I wanna make sure I'm in the right frame of mind or as much of a right frame as I can be in, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, so I'm just gonna relax a little bit and read some more of the Foxglove King. I am really enjoying that so far. Uh, maybe later today or tomorrow, I am going to read a little bit more of the Atlas Six since I'm a little further ahead in that one. Though if I read more of the Fox Love King, I'll probably get further in that. We'll just, we'll see. The thing is with the Atlas Six though, is I have the next book in the series and I have another one of all of you Blake's books. So if I choose to go down that road in the next couple of days, then I have more to binge, whereas the Foxglove King is just the, like, this book is just the first one in the series. Whenever I or anyone else is hanging out down here, the doggo always comes to hang out, you know, for the good pets. Look at that nose, though. Oh my gosh, so cute. Also, completely off topic, but in the staircase, uh that leads from the top floor to the basement there's this spider that's been hanging out in like the far corner of the ceiling for the past couple of days it's actually moved around quite a bit but it's always been hanging out on the ceiling in places that i can't reach and i've just been like tracking its movements for the past couple of days and i just don't know what to do because i can't kill it so i'm basically just cohabitating with this freaking spider i don't like what why do you have to be here, good sir? I could pretend that this clip is being filmed on the same day as all those other clips were up until this point. Um, that's not the case it's the 24th now yesterday that all those other clips were filmed on were were was the 23rd um can you tell i haven't had coffee yet today yesterday i did a little bit of writing and i also got a little bit further in the fox love king i have decided at this point that i'm gonna put off reading the atlas six right now because i want to film an all of you blake video where I read all of her books that are out. I have all of them in my possession except for Alone With You in the Ether, but I think I also just haven't picked that up yet because it's not like anything fantasy and it's not necessarily anything that I'm in the mood for right now, honestly. So I'm waiting until the summer and I have the time and the first round of edits for my work in progress will hopefully be done. It'll make a lot more sense to do it at that point in time. 
I also at some point want to read a bunch of Taylor Jenkins Reads books and watch finally Daisy Jones and the Six on Amazon Prime because I have that. Those are the two big videos I want to film this summer. Also, I really want to do reading Greek mythology inspired books for a week at some point because I have Percy Jackson, I have Ariadne, I have Circe, I have the Song of Achilles, and then there's one other book that's like escaping my brain right now that's also based on greek mythology today my plans go as follows write a little bit more um for the current work in progress and then also read a little bit more of the fox love king because i am actually really enjoying that book right now so i have to say that the seven faceless saints by mk lob is the main reason why i've been able to get out of my reading slump and it's propelled me to read more fantasy which is really exciting so that's why i followed up seven faceless saints with the foxglove king both deal with death magic and then after the foxglove king i think i'm gonna pick up kingdom of the wicked which is the first in that new ish not really that new trilogy by carrie maniscalco she also wrote stalking jack the ripper and all the books in that series obviously so i'm excited to get into that series as well and all of the books in that trilogy are out that's a, my main issue with reading seven faceless saints and the fox love king right now is because the other books in the series are not out yet but yeah um i also have a package coming today i can't wait to show you guys what it is hopefully it does get delivered today because that would suck it's not a book so make your guesses um i've currently been filming a lot of my vlogs on my phone and don't get me wrong my phone especially now um, and even the phone that I had over the summer, which was the iPhone 12, I have the iPhone 14 Pro now. Um, both really has both have really great cameras on them, but I kind of just told you what the package is going to be, but I won't tell you like what model or anything like that. Waiting for that to come today, I'm really excited. Um, that's pretty much all I have to update you on right now. I am just happy with the way things are going at the moment. So yeah, I'll talk to you later. And I'm going to get some writing done before I move on to reading some more of The Fox Love King. And I'll let you know what my thoughts are later on. But I think they're going to be good. I know they will. I have that feeling I get when I'm reading a book that I'm like, I know I'm going to finish this. Like, there's a moment in every book that I read where I'm like, I get that sort of click where I'm like, this is going to be a good book and I know I'm going to enjoy it. And I know I'm not going to have a hard time finishing it. And with most books, the click happens either in the third chapter when the climb well not the climax the inciting incident happens or even like 200 pages in and i'm like okay yeah no this is a good book and i'll finish it it really just depends book by book basis fox love king it happened from the first page and then also with seven faceless saints it happened within like the first two chapters i think and i was like this is gonna be fun i think because all these books at least recently deal with death magic and I'm writing about death magic as well. Um, and it's really interesting to see where everybody kind of takes that concept. It's like either something that kind of like comes from you or like a saint or God gives to you. And it's like just interesting to see where people go with that. So yeah, fun times. I'll talk to you. wanted my next uh clip for this vlog to be filmed with the new camera or at least wanted the next clip to be me unboxing the camera for you guys but I live in a part of the city where like when I order anything off of Amazon here I always get the packages like early afternoon to late evening. I guess I could talk about this now because like why not? I have actually been doing YouTube on and off since 2016. I've had a channel go all the way up to like 80 subscribers, which I know isn't that much, just shy of 100 subscribers, but that first 100 subscribers is always the hardest. Back in the day, booktube wasn't really that big of a thing, if you can believe that. Like, making content solely about books was so niche of a thing. For me, it was like I was proud, obviously, to be a part of the community, but I was also like, like, I felt like anytime I told people, like, that's what I watch on YouTube. They're like, well, books? Really? Like, why just content about books? I'm the kind of person who like likes to read 
to start when things aren't working out. So like if one YouTube channel I was working on didn't, like it was having a hard time growing, I just left it alone and I would start something else and I switched interests very quickly. So like at one moment I was um, making YouTube, like booktube videos, and then I wanted to start a YouTube channel um, back in like 2018 because I was going through my Korea boo phase. So I wanted to talk about my journey, like learning Korean, which I conversational at best. And me wanting to like move to Korea. So I was like really in deep into that. So I made a YouTube channel for that. Obviously that didn't really go anywhere. I went back to booktube at some point and then I think I just kept like very sparsely here and there uploading and I guess at some point my channel grew to 80 subscribers and then stuff happened and then now we're here. So I'm so annoyed with myself because every time I think about how I could have just stuck with the booktube stuff since 2016 and I could have been one of those channels that made it to like 100k subscribers. This could have been my freaking job and I was just like I couldn't understand that like and how could I like how could I know five years from now that like booktube was going to skyrocket in popularity the way that it has it just uh it hits deep within the soul you know but you can't really go back and change the way you did things all you can do is think about how what you're gonna do going forward and so what I'm gonna do going forward especially as someone who writes I want to be very particular about the book content that I make. I never want to make videos that are like dedicated one star reviews like I hated this book but at the same time I want to feel free to make content that I want and what I want is to not only make content about my writing but to make content about the books that I'm reading, the books I want to read. If I say a book is not bad per se but if I didn't like it for whatever reason that book is already out there and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it so i just want to put that in there as well i got a new camera so the camera i decided to go with is the zv 1f and i saw the test footage that other people put on the youtubes for this camera and it looked really good anyway the only thing I saw bad reviews for was the battery life and I think it's just a general thing that sometimes Sony cameras have issues when shooting in 4k they tend to overheat but oh, what are you gonna do and this was I say only 647 before like a pro camera that's pretty good look at her awesome I can charge it with the USB-C cable this is the little like fluffy thing that goes on top of the the mic? Oh, that's fun. I had to figure out how to put this on. It's like a little pom-pom. Uh, and then the little rechargeable battery. It's the camera. Watch me like, oh, never mind. I was gonna say watch me like spend hours trying to figure out how to open the little like battery compartment. Then I'll show you guys what the footage looks like a little bit. Okay, so this is me filming with the new camera. I'm sorry if the but it's just got a little shaky there. I just wanted to show you. I, I'm i 113 pages into the Fox Love King. I don't know the exact page count or anything, but she's not the chunkiest book I've read, but she's chunky enough. Like this is, I don't think it's gonna take me a while because I'm like flying through this right now, but, but yeah, I'm gonna close this out. So make sure to like, subscribe, and to do whatever the hell you want in life. Make sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified anytime that I post. Hope you have a great day and your night whenever you're watching this, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!